Number one says when rectangle ABCD is reflected across line FE, its image is DCBA. Okay, meaning that A is going to flip onto D, B is going to reflect over to C, C is going to reflect to B, and D is going to reflect back to A. So how do we know that segment AB is congruent to DC? So let's take a look here. I like to um, look at the way they wrote this. So AB is coming from this initial rectangle. So how do we know that AB is going to um, be congruent to DC? Okay, and DC is in this second one. So if we notice, they're in the same placement here. And that means that they're going to be corresponding parts. Okay, so these are going to be corresponding parts of congruent figures. Number two, triangle FGH is the image of isosceles triangle FEH. So this triangle flips down or is the bottom one is the image of the top one after a reflection. So it's going to flip over line FH. Um, select all statements that are result of corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent. Okay, so that it's a rectangle would not be true because a rectangle would need 90 degree angles. FEH has four congruent sides. That would be true because this one reflects down here. So GH and HE are corresponding parts. Um, and FG and EF are as well from flipping. So all four sides being congruent. The diagonal FH bisects the angle, and that would be true because this angle here, the corresponding angle is here. And so then those two angles are equal to each other, which then is the definition of bisector. Diagonal FH is perpendicular to FE. Perpendicular means 90 degrees, and we don't have that. Angle FEH, so FEH, this angle here, is congruent to FGH, so this angle here, and that would be true. Those are corresponding parts. Number three, reflect triangle ABC across line BC. So let's do that. So we're going to reflect it across there. And then let's label um, those parts. So A would reflect over here. So this would be A prime. B and B prime would be at the same point, And C and C prime would be at the same point. According to its side lengths, explain. Um, so classify the larger triangle. Okay, so we're going to classify um, triangle A, C, A prime. So let me draw that in here. So we're going to be looking at classifying this triangle. And so we know that this side is equal to this side because of them being corresponding parts. So we know that this is an isosceles triangle. Um, because A C and A prime C, A prime C are congruent to each other since they are corresponding parts um, of the reflection. Number four, triangles FAD and DEC are translations of ABC. So we see this ABC is the original. If we slide it here, it would land on DC. And if we slide it here, it would land on FAD. So we know that those triangles are congruent to one another. Um, select all of the statements that must be true. So points A, B, and F are collinear, and this is true um, because a translation would take a line parallel to, parallel to itself or to the exact same line. 
So this line right here is actually going to be taken to itself. So then this will be a line. And so B, A, and F are all on that line, meaning they're collinear. Um, B, the measure of angle B, C, A. So this angle here is the same as the measure of angle C, E, D. And that would be true since they are corresponding parts of those congruent triangles from the translation. Um, line AD, so let's find AD here. So here's line AD is parallel to line BC. And that will be true because of the translation again. BC, when we translate it up, goes to AD. And a translation will either take the line parallel to itself or to itself. So this one's taking it parallel. And so that would be true. The measure of CED is the same as the measure of FAD. So CED is right here, is the same as FAD, and that is not true. Those are not corresponding parts. Okay, this one would be the corresponding part with it. The measure of DAC, so this one again, so let me get rid of some of this other stuff here. All right, the measure of oops, DAC, which is actually this angle. So DAC is here. And the measure of BCA are equal to each other. And this is going to be true because those are alternate interior angles. So if I put those lines back on there, remember we said that AD is parallel to BC. And then AC would be the transversal. And we end up with alternate interior angles there. So that's true. And then triangle ADC, so this kind of middle triangle here, is a reflection of FAD, and that is not true. If we reflected this point over, it would land more like here rather than here, so that is false. Number five, um, ABC is congruent to, so ABC, this middle one, is congruent to BAD and CEA. Explain why points DA and E are collinear. So if we know, um, we can kind of see these different angles. So I've got this angle here. Okay, I've got this angle here. This one is actually going to be the same as this one from corresponding parts because it's B in this original triangle. Okay, and it's A in triangle BAD. They're in the same spot. So I know those are the same. Um, and then if I look at this angle here, this one is the same as this one. Again, um, it's C in the original and it's A in this one. So they're in corresponding spots. And then those three angles together will equal 180 degrees because we know that the three angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees and it's those same three angles. Um, so 180 degrees is a straight line. So that will create um, those angles being collinear. And then explain why the lines are parallel. And you could explain it um, because of alternate interior angles. So what would, depending on which ones you're looking at. But if you're looking at, you could say this angle and this angle are alternate interior. You could also do alternate interior here. But you'd have alternate interior angles are congruent. Number six, identify a figure that is the result of a rigid transformation of quadrilateral A, B, C, D. So let's look at A, B, C, D. It's right here. Now there's going to be multiple different answers here. You only have to pick um, one of them. Um, I'm just going to kind of pick a bunch of different ones here and explain, um, explain for each one. So if we did this one down here. Okay, so this one here, we can see that we could um, translate the orange quadrilateral down and then reflect it. So I'm going to say translate by segment AD, then reflect across DK. 
So that would be, um, again, for this one, let me color code it for you. So that would be for this one. Um, then if we wanted to go to this one, we could say that, let me get this colored here. So this one, you just need to rotate. Okay, so rotate um, A, B, C, D around, let's oops, rotate A, B, C, D 180 degrees around point B. Well, and not even 180 degrees, let's see. Rotate um, A, B, C, D around point B until C coincides with F since we don't know the actual angle measure, but we just wanna rotate C up until F. So that would be for this kind of purple one right here. If we wanted to do this top one, so let me just make this one green maybe. Um, for this one, we could again rotate around. Um, and this time it looks to be a 180 degree rotation from the straight line, but rotate a, B, C, D around point B, and you could just say until C coincides with H, or in this case, you could do a 180 degree, um, 180 degrees as well if you wanted to do that instead. So that would be for that top one. And then this one down here also works. So let's um, do this one here. Whoops. So we'll do this one um, and this one. You, um, we want to get um, DC to land here, okay? And then where we want to get those matched up, and then this AD matches this IN. So um, maybe we let's see what could we do here. Looks like we can just rotate it, right? So just rotate because then D will land here, A will land on N. So rotate A, B, C, D around point C until, um, and then pick what you want. So if you want to say um, until B lands on O, that would be fine. Until B coincides with O. Um, and this again would be a 180 degree rotation if you wanted as well.